Hey everyone, Samurai Jack asked me a couple questions in the comments a few days ago, and in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're going to take on the first question talking about Hall's theorem and Hall's condition. Hall's theorem is about matchings in bipartite graphs. So if you're not familiar with matchings, I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson I did on them. A matching is just an independent edge set in a graph. So it's a set of edges such that no two edges share a common vertex. Samurai Jack, I'm not sure if you wanted a proof. I pretty much assume people always want proofs. Those are the most fun. So we're going to do a proof of Hall's theorem either next week or later this week. In this video, we're just going to introduce the theorem and the very directly related Hall's condition. So people watch this video, then you'll be ready to go for when that proof comes out. Or if you see the proof first, you can refer back to this video for a helpful introduction to the theorem. So let's get into it. We'll start off by reading Hall's condition. Let G be a bipartite graph with partite sets U and W, where U is the smaller partite set. So U has as many or fewer vertices than W, and if we want to put a number to that cardinality, we could say that U has R vertices. Then, the bipartite graph G is said to satisfy Hall's condition if, for every subset S of that smaller partite set U, S has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. That n of s is the neighborhood of s. It's the set of all vertices adjacent to vertices of s. So really the idea behind this condition, if a bipartite graph satisfies the condition, then we could pick any subset of that smaller partite set, and if the graph satisfies the condition, we're guaranteed to have sufficiently many neighbors to match those vertices to. Something I should point out, of course, S is a subset of that smaller partite set U. Since this is a bipartite graph, the neighborhood of S is a subset of the other partite set W, because every edge in a bipartite graph joins vertices in the different partite sets. Now, having just read Hall's condition, let's state Hall's theorem. So we're still talking about the same bipartite graph G with partite sets U and W, and so on. So furthermore, bipartite graph G contains a matching of cardinality R, which is to say it contains a matching that includes all R vertices of the smaller partite set U, if and only if G satisfies Hall's condition. So uh, important thing here I want to make sure is clear, since this is a bipartite graph, if a matching has R edges, which is what Hall's theorem is guaranteeing us we will have in this graph if it satisfies Hall's condition. If it has a matching with R edges, those R edges have to be incident to now, R vertices in each partite set, because so each edge is incident with one vertex in one partite set and, and one vertex in the other partite set. So really the important point is that this matching of cardinality R is going to contain an edge incident with each vertex of that smaller partite set U, which has R vertices. Said another way, every vertex of U, the smaller partite set, must be incident with an edge in the matching, since that matching has a cardinality equal to U's cardinality. In that case, we say that the matching covers or saturates the partite set U since it includes edges incident with each vertex of U. And so then lastly, we could state Hall's theorem a slightly different way. Instead of saying that G contains a matching of cardinality R, we could say G contains a matching that covers the smaller partite set if and only if G satisfies Hall's condition. It is of course possible that U and W have the exact same number of vertices in which case either one can play the role of the smaller partite set, and it doesn't really matter. Now, hopefully, uh, to help make this a little more clear, we'll take a look at a couple examples, and I do think that will help. So here is a bipartite graph. First, let's identify our partite sets U and W. This is the smaller partite set with three vertices, and then here we've got W, partite set with four vertices. So to see if this graph satisfies Hall's condition, we'd have to look at every subset of the smaller partite set and see how many neighbors it has, see if it satisfies this inequality. 
If any one of those subsets doesn't satisfy this inequality, then the graph doesn't satisfy Hall's condition. If they all satisfy the inequality, the graph does satisfy Hall's condition, and we're guaranteed to be able to find a matching that covers all vertices of this smaller partite set. Of course, in a bipartite graph, if we do have a bigger partite set and a smaller partite set, so two partite sets with different numbers of vertices, we'll never have a matching that covers the bigger partite set because there just aren't enough vertices in the smaller partite set to match them to. All right, so now looking back here, let's take a look at a couple subsets of the smaller partite set. Suppose we look at these two vertices here, so we could call that S. What is the neighborhood of S? Well, this vertex is adjacent to those three, and then that vertex is just adjacent to that one. So these three vertices make up the neighborhood of S. And we see S has two vertices, the neighborhood of S has three vertices, and so this particular subset of the smaller partite set does satisfy this inequality. S has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. So let's take a look at another subset and see if maybe in fact this graph does satisfy Hall's condition. The first subset looks good. Let's take a look at another subset. Try to erase carefully here. All right, that looks good. Suppose we look at these two vertices here, call this S. What's the neighborhood of this set S? Well, these two vertices are each only adjacent to that single vertex. So this single vertex is the neighborhood of S. We see that this particular subset of the smaller partite set breaks the desired inequality. The number of vertices in S is greater than the number of neighbors it has because, of course, 2 is greater than 1. Since this inequality doesn't hold for every single subset of the smaller partite set, this graph does not satisfy Hall's condition, and so we know we will not be able to find a matching that covers all vertices of the smaller partite set. Now let's take a look at this other bipartite graph over here. I'll just erase that so the board's got a little more space. Again, let's identify our partite sets. This one here is U. It's the smaller partite set with four vertices. This is the bigger partite set with five vertices. Let's take a look at a couple subsets of the smaller partite set. You can imagine that this graph is going to satisfy Hall's condition because it would be pretty lame to provide two examples where neither one satisfies the condition. So we're not going to check every subset of U, which you would have to if you wanted to satisfy the condition. We'll check a couple subsets and then we'll see that indeed there is a matching. So let's just take a look here. Suppose we look at these two vertices, call that S, that subset of the smaller partite set. What is the neighborhood of S? Well, the neighbors of this vertex are those two, and the neighbor of that vertex, or the neighbors of this vertex, are that vertex and that vertex. So these three vertices make up the neighborhood of S. We see S has two vertices, the neighborhood of S has three vertices, so this particular subset does indeed satisfy our desired inequality. The subset has as many or fewer neighbors than it, or excuse me, the subset has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. It's got two vertices, it's got three neighbors. Awesome. Let's check out another subset. We'll just check out one more subset, and then we will point out a matching in this graph that covers the smaller partite set. Suppose we look at, let's say, this vertex and this vertex, and so together they make up a subset S. What is the neighborhood of this set S? Well, this vertex is adjacent to those two, and this vertex is adjacent to that one and that one. So, just those bottom three, that is the neighborhood of S. We see, again, this subset S satisfies the desired inequality. It has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. S has two vertices, the neighborhood of S has three vertices. There are sufficiently many neighbors to match these vertices to. So, of course, to be sure that the graph satisfied Hall's condition, we'd have to check every subset of the smaller partite set, but I can guarantee you it does satisfy Hall's condition, so feel free to check that on your own. 
we're going to go ahead and find a matching in the graph that covers every vertex of U. Let me close this marker and uh, suppose we'll use orange. Actually, let's use purple to highlight sort of the edges that we're going to include in the matching. So again, Hall's condition, if a bipartite graph satisfies Hall's condition, which I'm telling you this one does, then we will be able to find a matching that covers every vertex in the smaller partite set. And of course, the converse is also true. If we can find a matching that covers every vertex in the smaller partite set, then the graph satisfies Hall's condition. Again, proof on that coming soon. All right, so let's see if we can find a matching. Suppose we match this vertex to that vertex. Let's say we match this vertex to that vertex, this vertex to that vertex, and this vertex to that vertex. Look at that. That is a set of edges covering every vertex in the smaller partite set where no two edges share a common vertex. Pretty sweet. So that's what we want. That's a matching that saturates or covers the smaller partite set, which if we showed for sure that this graph satisfied Hall's condition, that would guarantee us that we'd be able to find a matching like this. Just to make sure we're super clear on what a matching actually is, let's label these edges. We'll say E1, E2, E3, and then this is E4. So the matching is the set of these independent edges. So if we call the matching M, that is the set containing the edges E1, E2, E3, and E4. Pretty sweet. Now, the last thing I want to point out about Hall's condition that I think if you understand this, it will definitely help you understand the proof. Suppose we've got a bipartite graph that satisfies Hall's condition. If we create a subgraph of this graph by taking some vertices from its smaller partite set, so for example, let's just say we take these top two vertices, or let's say the top three vertices from the smaller partite set, and we take all of the neighbors of those vertices. So in that case, that would be that vertex, that vertex, that vertex, that vertex, and that's all of them. So we've got the top four vertices here. And now just to make it clear what we're doing, let's draw the edges. I'll draw the edges in this same pink color. So we take some vertices from the smaller partite set, the top three, then we take all of their neighbors. In this case, those were the top four. And now we will draw these edges. So we're just taking a sort of vertex induced subgraph here. So if we create a subgraph of a bipartite graph that satisfies Hall's condition, if we take a subgraph in this manner, this subgraph will also satisfy Hall's condition. Because of course, whatever vertices we took from the smaller partite set, that was just a subset of the smaller partite set, which if the original graph satisfied Hall's condition, we'd be guaranteed that that subset has as many or fewer vertices than it had neighbors. And all of its subsets, all of the subsets of the subset, are also just subsets of that original partite set U. And so they'll also satisfy this inequality. So if we just take some of those vertices, as well as all of their neighbors, which are the only things being counted in the inequality, we're guaranteed to get a graph that also satisfies Hall's condition, which you could check here by just looking at all of the, uh, yeah, I mean, let's just check, right? You got one vertex, two neighbors, good. One vertex, two neighbors, good to go. One vertex, two neighbors, two vertices, one, two, three, four neighbors, that's real good. These two vertices, one, two, three, four neighbors, that's great. These two vertices, one, two, three neighbors, that's great. All three of the vertices, of course, together have four neighbors. So we see this subgraph satisfies Hall's condition. I think I checked all the subsets. Let me know if I missed one. But so that's, that's going to be helpful in the proof, knowing that property, uh, because it's going to be a proof by induction. So you can imagine how this sort of thing is going to let us use an inductive hypothesis. And so with all that said, I think we'll stop it there. I can take some deep breaths. I hope this video helped you understand Hall's condition and Hall's theorem 
for matchings in bipartite graphs. Of course, Hall's theorem also has a set theoretic formulation. We'll talk about that another time. Let me know if you'd like to see that sooner rather than later. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you all so much for all the support, and be sure to subscribe to the swankiest math lessons on the internet. When have I fallen?